Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also a little bit of life and other crafts that I enjoy. Um, today is Sunday. It is May 23rd. This is Bagheera for those of you who are new to my channel. And um, today is my floss tube number 94. So I'm coming really close up onto that 100 um, mark uh, of uh, videos. And I'm coming up on my um, two year, I guess, floss tube anniversary. Uh, my very first video was the weekend before 4th of July. So it was 2019 and I believe 4th of July that year, maybe it was a Sunday as it is this year, um, because I did my second video on the 5th and it was just like a week later. So um, I know I'm coming up on it and right around that time is when I'm going to be going on a vacation with my family. And so I'll be doing a vacation vlog as I've done uh, a couple times in the past. So um, who knows how we'll celebrate, but um, uh, we're coming up on some cool stuff. Um, Bagheera is in my lap here because um, as I do pretty much every other weekend, I went over to my brother and sister-in-law's uh, Friday night and uh, Saturday night. I drove home this morning. They're just about a half an hour down the road, uh, down the freeway from me. And um, I always leave, you know, nice big bowl of food and bowl of water for Baggy. And he's fine for, uh, you know, one night by himself. But uh, when I get home on Sunday mornings, if I've been gone for a day, he is extremely needy the next day and wants to talk at me a lot and um, give me lots of kisses and cuddles. And right as I sat down to film the video, he's been quiet all morning since I got home and fed him. <laughs> but he seems to know. As soon as I sat down in this chair and faced the camera, he was over here meowing. So I figured I'd pick him up and let him say hello to you, although he's not facing you guys. You can't see his very pretty face. There it is. He's got the beautiful eyes. The beautiful cat eyes. Yeah. And um, he'll jump down in a minute and we can get going with the video. So first thing I want to do is say welcome to anybody who's new. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you like what you see and want to hit like and subscribe on my channel. Um, I am kind of inching up towards the 2000 mark. I mean, I've got several hundred to go, but um, it's very, very nice to see, you know, new subscribers pretty much every week and I'm glad that so many people out there in the floss tube universe are finding me and enjoying me because I'm doing that constantly I'm constantly looking for new floss tubers to watch and enjoy and you know how it is I mean you'll come across somebody and maybe watch them once and it's okay and then you come across somebody else and you just can't get enough and um, it's really nice to know that there's some people out there that, that feel that way about me. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for coming by. For those of you who, who do come and visit me regularly, you guys mean so much to me. And I'm very, very thankful to have you guys uh, coming to my channel and communicating with me and sending me messages and just being a really good part of my life. Um, I want to give a very special thank you shout out today to Julie Martin. Um, she used the buy me a coffee link on my channel and sent me a little um, monetary gift. Uh, thank you gift for, you know, me putting out videos. And um, I have to say, um, for those of you who do videos, who do floss tubes, you know, it's, it's, it's totally fun, but it is kind of a lot of work. It's a commitment. I do do this every Sunday. So it's like I have my Sunday morning into the afternoon job that has to be done every week. And um, although I love it and it is just a really positive part of my life, it is something that takes up my time and effort and thought. And, um, and so it's nice to be recognized and it's nice to have people say thank you. It's nice to have people uh, use the buy me a coffee. Um, it's never, never expected, but it is so welcome when, welcome and uh, appreciated when you guys do that for me. Um, so I just do want to let you know it's there and um, say thank you to Julie for using it this past week. Um, so let's see, little, little things to talk about. I always kind of tell you what the weather's like. It is gorgeous today here in Southern California. Blue skies, slight breeze. Uh, not too hot temperatures. I mean, when I was out there earlier, um, 
it's probably like 65 68 and it's it's gorgeous today so definitely wonderful southern california spring weather today um so hopefully that sticks around it's a nice it's a nice way for it to be where it's just gorgeous and kind of springy summery but not too hot i don't like it when it's too hot um as i said i went over to Ernest stacy's this weekend and we did something that because of COVID has been put off for 10 months now. So we celebrated my brother's 50th birthday, which was um, in July of 2020. Um, we finally went out to our favorite uh, sushi bar as a family. The one thing he's wanted to do forever, ever since he heard about it, is he wanted to go to our favorite sushi bar and order omakase which um i hope i'm saying that right but basically you sit down you tell the sushi um the sushi chef omakase and it basically means i trust you give me a good meal and so they just make whatever they want to make and give it to you and you eat it um and so my brother has wanted to do that for so long he wanted to do omakase and have some nice cold sake and just have a relaxing dinner with us and we were able to do that um the sushi chef didn't give him anything too wild and crazy, although if he had, my brother would have liked that too because um, my brother and I are pretty adventuresome when it comes to sushi and we're pretty open to trying just about anything and liking a lot of stuff that a lot of people don't like. My sister-in-law, Stacy is a little bit um, less adventurous, but I did order a couple things that are maybe a little little more adventurous, let's say. I mean, they're not weird. They're just a little bit more adventurous. Like, I love uni and I love... Um, jumbo scallops and I ordered those and she had never had those so she tasted them both of them were a no for her but um but we also had like uh uh tuna 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 tartare I think um and shrimp boats are a favorite and just oh it was so good it was so good you guys um I mean the last time we went to that restaurant was probably about two years ago now and um it was someplace Aaron wanted to go to for his 50th birthday. Of course, we were under quarantine then. And at that time, it was like, well, it's okay. We'll go during the summer between my birthday and his birthday, and we'll celebrate both. And, of course, that didn't happen. And then after my birthday, it's like, well, we'll go for Stacy's birthday, which is in April. And that didn't happen. So, you know, now that things have finally opened up, it was just time to go and... Um, be in a restaurant for, um, well, it's the second time we did go to a restaurant last week, but going to, it was, it was just amazing. And for Aaron and Stacy, except for the like one and a half hour pedicure that they had two weeks ago when I stayed with the kids, this is the first time that they have both together been out of the house without their children since, um, what? March 2020. Yeah. So it's the first time in over a year that they have been out of the house without their children. <laughs> and they love their children. But as you parents know, <laughs> that is a big thing. So um, it was just really nice to have an adult a couple hours. And um, yeah, it was just, it was really, it was a really good experience. And my brother was very happy being able to do the omakase. So it was just a really nice, nice evening. We came home. We, um, Stacy had gotten some, um, these inside out s'more things, which were fun, but actually not very, not as delicious as we were hoping they would be. Real s'mores were better. Um, but we tried those with the kids and then, um, after the little one was asleep, we watched a movie. So it was just a really nice evening, as it always is when I go over there. Um, Stacey and I were stitching during the movie, as we always do. And um, yeah, I just, I always have a really good time with them. So that was fun. Um, on the family front, one bit of very exciting news we have is that my oldest nephew, Logan, got his first vaccine last week. Um, he is 13 years old, so Pfizer just opened it up for, uh, what, 13 to 18 year olds? Or Yeah, so he's 13, he's able to have it. Um, he, 
of all the three kids is the one who's a little bit more anxious about germs and that kind of thing. So he was thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to be able to get on that road to being vaccinated. Um, and he's very happy but that by the time we go on our vacation um, in Vegas uh, at the beginning of July, he will be fully vaccinated. It makes him feel a lot um, less anxious about going out into the world. And so that was a really good thing. And we're all really happy that he was able to do that. He had no problems at all, just feeling a little bit tired and, um, um, you know, a little bit slower, you know, and his arm hurt a little bit. Um, enough so that when his sister like accidentally punched him in the arm, he was happy about it, but, um, but not too bad. So, um, so his experience was very positive and, um, we're all really glad that he is on the road to be fully vaccinated. And now the next thing is just to get the 11 year old and the six year old done. And they're saying maybe this summer. So we're hoping, we're hoping, um, especially Reagan, because she is one who goes out in the world and goes to her cheer gym and stuff like that. So we would really like her to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Um, let's see, anything else? Oh, and then the other exciting thing is next weekend, which is a three day weekend here in the U S um, I will be having a friend over for the first time in over, you know, a year and a half. Um, so I have a friend coming over on Monday. Um, I scheduled it for the Monday, uh, A, because it's the day off and B, because that gives me the weekend to finish like making my apartment look not awful <laughs> and I need it. Um, but Marianne's going to come over. We're going to have some lunch. Um, I was going to cook and then decided, you know what? I'm not going to cook. We're going to DoorDash because I'm lazy like that right now. This is the time of my life where I just don't feel like cooking and planning. I just want to do things easy. Um, and she totally gets that. But she's going to come over to visit and meet Baggy because she's going to be the one who's going to be coming over to feed him while I'm gone at the beginning of July. So we just want to make sure that, you know, I can give her the key and, you know, all the stuff that needs to be done just in preparation for that. So I'm looking forward to that. As I said, it'll be weird. It'll be the first time that anybody's really been in my apartment except for the occasional um, maintenance guy from my apartment building. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty odd to have somebody in my space. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. So I think that's it for me being long winded as I usually am at the beginning of these videos. Um, I went back and I was watching some of my old videos and like at the very beginning when I started doing these, I barely talked at the beginning. I just got right down to business and now I'm all chatty with you guys and yapping away. Um, but you guys have stuck with me for this long, so I guess it's okay. <laughs> um, oh, well, and one other thing I wanted to mention, um, my orchid here, uh, I think it's, it's, the flowers are looking like they're on their last legs. I don't know if you guys have noticed that in the last several videos. Um, I got that actually Stacy got it. Um, one of her friends came over, uh, to visit outside, um, a month or so ago and brought that for her. And when I got, when I got to their house, the next time I was over, it was sitting out on the patio because Stacy is extremely allergic to flowers. So she just doesn't take any of them in the house. And I'm like, what is that orchid out there? I wink, wink. Cause I kind of knew. And she's like, well, you know, my friend brought it for me. I can't have it. Do you want it? I'm like, yes, of course. So I brought it home and it's been here in my videos and I've been giving it its ice cubes every week, like you're supposed to. And it's lasted a really long time, but now the flowers are looking pretty sad. Um, but my question is, cause I really don't know anything about orchids. I had one before a couple years ago. I got one for my birthday in a plant, a pot like that. And when the flowers died, it just kind of died and I ended up tossing it cause I didn't know if I'm supposed to do something with it. Like, will the flowers come back? Um, like next year and how do I keep it alive so the flowers will come back? I don't know. So if any of you guys are really familiar with orchids and have any, um, tips for easy care for the orchid, because I am really not a great plant person, um, then let me know what I'm supposed to be doing with this once all of these flowers fall off. Like, are they going to come back anytime soon? Is this just, you know, is an orchid just a, a couple months thing and then it's done or I mean I can't it can't be right because I know people keep orchids forever but I just don't know what to do with it so let me know knowing I have no backyard I have no no place to uh really put it um so anyway let me know what I should do if you know anything about orchids 
Okay, so let's get started on all the good stitchy stuff today. I keep feeling like I'm going to knock something over back here. Um, uh, okay, no new starts, no finishes, but I did get really close to a finish to something that if I work on it um, this week, then I think I will be close to finish. So this is something that I wasn't planning on doing. And the reason I actually started working on it was I was on a zoom call and I was working at my table here and I kind of pulled this out. This is not something that I had put on my cat mania plans. Um, however, it is, it was originally on my cat mania plans until I pared them down to try and be a little bit more realistic and get more projects or more work done on each project that I put on the list. Um, so this is my Mill Hill Moonstruck. And um, I definitely want to have this done before the fall because it will be gorgeous to display it. And I was down to, I thought I had finished all the stitching and I hadn't quite. So there's still, there was still a little bit of stitching to do, but I think I have finally completed the stitching and all that is left now is finishing the beading. So um, you can see it's pretty much all done down here. Actually stitching, there's a, there's a, oops, there's a spider web that goes right there. So that I still have to do. Um, the tree needs to be beaded all the way here and um, there's beading that goes around the moon and around the cat and I think that that's pretty much it so this is maybe one or two evenings of beading left and then I will be done and I think I'm gonna be talking to my friend Tracy this afternoon and um, maybe zooming maybe just talking that will be a good time to work on the beading so I would really like to get this finished sooner rather than later. Um, I would really like another project that I can mark off on my finish box because as I keep adding things, I need to get the finishes. Um, so um, I was glad that I realized I was so close to actually getting done with this one and, and pulling it out. So I worked on this, I think two sessions last week and um, yeah, I got quite a bit done. So I'm happy with that. Okay. Um, other projects this week, I worked on night creatures, just a little bit. Every time I pull this out, you guys, it's the gathering place, night creatures. Um, oh, and as an aside, which I think is working, um, last week you will have noticed because it was really driving me crazy that my ring light was like really, really, um, reflecting in my glasses and I always wear glasses on my videos because if I don't wear the glasses I can't see my notes and I can't see my projects um I don't wear glasses for distance or for like regular life but anything that's happening in this area I need glasses for um anyway so I have my ring light I have a little setup here that my friend got me for the holidays which is a uh, camera holder and a ring light that are kind of attached together they're on separate arms um and then it you know it has the ring light and it has like the different diffusion things so i had it set up but i had the ring light like right in front of me and so i went and i looked at like what can you do to get that glare out of the glasses and it said to have your lights to the side instead of in front of you so i moved the ring light over so the ring light is right here right now and then i also put on i have another like ring light for my desk not like a filming one but they're pretty much the same actually and I have it right here so I have the two lights going like that and I think it's good because I don't see the glare in my glasses like when I just held this up I could see the glare and I think that's actually from this one well, I don't know anyway um so let me know I mean do you notice a difference at all I mean I think it's good you're not seeing the big circle in my glasses so that's got to be an improvement um anyway back on to uh, the Gathering Place Night Creatures. The other thing I want to say is every time I pull this out, every time I mention it to you guys, um, and I say Night Creatures, I get the BG song Night Fever going in my head every single time. And I want to like sing it when I pull this out. I'm not going to, but I do. So this was a uh, gifted chart from Michelle. Uh, bendy stitchy and I'm doing it on uh, a piece of the stitch me fabric 
in sleet with mostly mystical diamond art threads and then some other overdies as well. Um, I did a little bit more on the moon and a little bit on another kind of pod thing. Now in the moon, I am off somewhere and my stitches in the moon, like there's an extra, like I went over three threads instead of two at some place. So every time I do a row, I have to fudge something in there, but I'm figuring it's only in the moon. So once I get that finished and I don't really think that you can tell, like when I look at it, it's kind of a tone on tone. The moon is tone on tone anyway. But there's like a little weirdness right here, you know, where like you can, the stitches don't exactly line up. I don't care. And I still think it's going to be gorgeous. So I'm liking that pattern. It's kind of fun to pull it out. The only thing is, is because that fabric is, and I don't know if it's like the color or the fact that it's an opal or the fact that I'm in that area, I'm stitching tone on tone. That's why it's a little bit more difficult. But I really feel like I can't, I don't want to count over on this one. I just want to do stuff that's connected because I'm afraid I would mess up on this one. So, oops. Okay. Maggie is lying at my feet right here, snoring away. Okay, let's see. I did a little bit of stitching on All Hallows Eve by Lila's Studio. And um, I am doing this project with uh, Amy Sprinklestein Stitches. I think she I think she just started her. She showed it on her last video. Um, and we're calling it hashtag All Hallows Eve in May. So if you would like to stitch on it with us, please do. And you can attach a picture to the hashtag on Instagram. Um, which is always fun. I'm not great about posting on Instagram, um, but it's fun. And it's fun to go back like months later and look at, um, look at, you know, the different pictures of, you know, different people's work on the same project or people's work on different projects with the same theme. I think that's always fun. So I started on the Little Witch's shirt and on the corn. And I just, I really like it. And I'm really glad I chose this fabric. This was a, not the original fabric I was going to do. I was going to use like this really bright green purpley fabric, which would have been pretty, but um, I got this piece of fabric as a gift from Cindy Pope um, in a big package that she sent me. It was just amazing, the fabric that she sent me. And just, I just know that I just thought this fabric was going to be perfect. And I just really love, especially how the modeling hits with the moon right there. I just, I think that's really, really pretty. So, and I know that the, the colors that I picked for the vine is a little bit, it's a little bit tone on tone, but you know what? I don't mind it. I just really like, it doesn't look the same as the pattern. The pattern is much, um, the pattern, the vines are, you know, stand out a lot more, but I just, I like it. I really do. Now this color is also supposed to be the color in the corn, uh, the stems and stuff. And I did change that, um, because I wanted the corns not to be quite as tone on tone. For those of you that have watched me for any length of time, you will know that um, usually, unless I'm dealing with like something like a Hade, um, but for smaller patterns, you know, regular patterns like that, I really consider the pattern as just kind of a jumping off point, a guide as far as fabric and floss. And um, I would say, well, 100% of the time, I pick my own fabric. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten the call for fabric. Um, I very rarely use a neutral color fabric. Um, and as far as the floss, um, I usually use the colors just as a guide. Um, I only think I have a, I only have a couple projects that I've actually kitted 
as called for. Um, the one obviously Hades I do as called for. The Mirabilias and Bella Filipinas I do as called for. Those are all DMCs anyway, um, for the most part. Uh, sometimes the pretty ladies have a little bit of silk or something. Um, but for everything else, I pretty much use called for colors in the pattern as a, a guide. Sometimes I try and match them. Sometimes I go way different and um, that's just how I stitch and I think that's great. And in fact, um, I've done a little bit of dabbling in um, in designing and um, although I haven't actually put out anything yet, I don't, I'm kind of like torn like how to do that because I kind of don't want to like say I use this color or that color. Um, because I kind of, since I stitch as things as a jumping off point, I just kind of want to say, you know, use a brown, use a blue, you know. But I know that there's a lot of people who really use the called for as kind of set in stone and they don't want to think about colors on their own and that kind of thing. So that's kind of hard for me because um, I don't quite know how to design with that idea that I have to write down everything that they're using and that kind of thing. So I don't know. It's it's a challenge for me. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you usually stitch, you know, exactly as called for? Do you exactly get the fabric? Do you exactly get the floss? Do you get um, as close to approximation or do you just go wild like I do? Let me know. I'm curious as to how everybody has their, their, uh, their way of stitching. Um, again, on Hades or, or the, the pretty lady type stuff, then I stick to it because they're so elaborate and that I definitely don't want to have to think about too much. But for smaller patterns, I just, I pick what I have, um, you know, and, and it's also because when I do have odorides and I have fancy flosses, um, I want to use them. I, I am trying not to just hoard them and hold them because they're pretty. I want to use them. So that is kind of how, how I do it, how I make sure I use them. Okay, next thing. I'm sorry if I'm looking down. I have my notes kind of in front of me this time um, before they were over here and I noticed I was looking over the side a lot. Now I have them right under my camera, but it means I, I tend to look a little bit down. So um, sorry if I'm not looking at you guys, um, but that's why. Um, okay, so next thing that I worked on this week was Bellatrix by Bella Filipina, speaking of. And... Um, I just think she is so pretty. Um, so of course I want to stitch her all the time because she's so pretty. Um, she is in my head, my D and D character, what my D and D character would look like when she's at home and not adventuring. Um, my D and D character is a, a cleric, um, of actually a death goddess, although she's not an evil character. She's a lawful neutral character. Um, and I didn't create her. My brother actually created her as a non-playing character in his D&D game with his kids. And then when I started playing with them, I just took over the character. But I am slowly, as we play more, I'm making her more my own. I've changed, like, the spells that she knows. And um, we're slowly changing, like, what she's wearing and carrying with her. And, and it's now becoming more my character and my how I want her to be, which is kind of fun. Oops. This is on a piece of Hands Eye by Rolanda fabric that I was given as a gift by uh, Aaron T. Martini Stitcher for my birthday in 2019, I think. Um, and I, this fabric, you guys, I realized that I think uh, Hands Eye by Rolanda is one of my favorite dyers because I go onto her site and honestly I want every single piece and I don't buy them because they're not cheap um, so I only seem to get them when I, I you know have a specific project in mind um, but oh my god I and I don't know how I mean I dye some fabric I know how to dye fabric and I know how to make it look modeled and stuff like that I have no idea how she gets these these swirls and it's just, oh, it's so pretty. But I um, worked, actually at the top and bottom, I filled in some of the skin here and starting in a little bit on her hair. And then I brought um, some of the color down in the skirt too. So, but 
I mean, this fabric is so gorgeous. And I just think it's going to look so pretty with this project, the colors and stuff. And then the dark, like, castle sort of window. I just think it's going to be so pretty when it's done. So, yes, hand dyed by Rolanda. This fabric is gorgeous. And I shouldn't even say that because, you know, I want to encourage you to go get it. But not really because because I want it all. But no, go ahead and get it. Because if you buy it all, then she'll be, you know, encouraged to dye more. And there'll be new things in there for me to look at and want. Okay. Okay. Moon um, Fairy. Um, so this weekend I brought um, the Moon Fairy one uh, over to Erin and Stacy's. Um, I showed you guys this last week, and and I'm doing I'm doing it to kind of have an easy fill in project. Um, so I'm going to do this one and. Then this one, oops, ah, hold on. This one and then this one on the same um, piece of fabric and then I'm gonna put them in uh, circle hoops and hang them together. I think that'll be really cool. Um, but anyway, so this is the one I'm working on first. This is an, on a 22 count hardanger that um, I dyed. So actually let me pull these off so you can see the whole fabric. And I just, I really love this fabric. This is one of my favorite pieces that I've dyed. I just think it came out really, really pretty. Um, and I think it's looking really nice with this uh, moon fairy. So I was able to um, do her whole head while we were watching uh, Hunger Games 2 Friday night. Um, I did her head and then I started uh, filling in some stuff yesterday when I didn't want to pay attention to the pattern. Um, and then the idea that I had for both of these is I think I'm going to stitch. So I'm stitching this with black silk because um, I thought it would be fun. I haven't worked a lot with silk and I just wanted to do something a tiny bit different. Um, so I'm using one strand of black silk on the Hardinger, uh, which is a 22 count similar to Ada, but it doesn't have as many, um, uh, Ada has four threads in the warp in the weft, um, and Hardanger has two threads in the warp in the weft. So it stitches similarly, but it's not exactly the same. So I'm doing it over one on Hardanger with one strand. Um, so Hardanger is 22 count. But what I thought would be kind of nice is in the wing, so just in this part and that part on this one, um, I'm going to add a blending filament to the um, black silk. And I think I'm gonna add this because I think that this like little silvery blue might look pretty on this with the black. So um, I might try that today. I haven't worked a lot with blending filament. I'm using some blending filament um, on my white filigree pumpkin um, with one strand, I think one strand of DMC on that, which I think I'm also maybe doing on hard anger. So I'm not sure though. I have to pull that one out. That's a fall project. Um, but anyway, I think I'm going to try that today. I put a few stitches into the wings with this. And I just think that might add just a little, just a little bit of sparkle in the wings that will look really cool. So, um, So I'm enjoying that one. This is a very like easy stitch. Okay. And then the last two things I worked on were two um, Heaven and Earth Design projects. Um, I really, I decided to work on the, um, my lavender roses. What do I do with the... I don't think I pulled out the, the photo, but that's okay because it's done enough to where you guys can see it. And um, when I worked on this last week, I think it was, 
so many comments. So I know you guys love this project. So I almost feel like more of a, I don't want to use the word obligation, but um, because I don't feel like a negative obligation, but I know you guys love seeing this. And so really are anxious for me to finish it, which I am too. So I worked on this some more and um, I did quite a bit more on it. And I did kind of just a stitch count calculation on my own and I am like 66% done with this or 66.8% done. So I am two thirds done with this project. And I think um, not only percentage wise, but just because I've turned the corner on the diagonal and the diagonals will start getting shorter, it'll feel like it's moving faster. So I am anxious to finish this diagonal. Maybe I'll work on this this afternoon. I don't know. I don't know. On Sundays when I do my videos, I, every time I pull something out, I'm like, yeah, I want to work on that. I don't want to work on that. So, you know, and then Sundays oftentimes I don't actually do that much stitching because I'm doing so much uh, uploading and stuff like that. But um, I am anxious to keep working on this one and get, get it done. I think the next diagonal here, I'm going to get close to finishing actually finishing the eye um I'm not 100% sure but it is going to get close to finishing the eye and then you know it's going to be a lot of purple down in this corner because the roses come in again like they do over here look how pretty that is yes love that one okay and then the last one I worked on is my newest Hade, which is also a quick stitch, but I gotta say, this one's a quick stitch, but it's like 300 and something. You know, it's this is not a small quick stitch, so this is not typical, because the quick stitches usually are under like 200 stitches a side, which is, you know, what makes them in my head a little bit more manageable. Um, and granted, it's not like the 800, 700, 800, 900, 1,000 that a lot of Hades are, but it's still over 300. It's like 350 by 320, something like that, this one. Um, but with that being said, it is going a little bit faster in general because at least so far it's less colors and less confetti. Um, and again, still doesn't look like much, but um, it's still just a white triangle. But I did this much of the next diagonal. And it's kind of fun. I'm still doing my same uh, method of stitching on the diagonal and parking, but I am doing a little bit more color completing in the diagonal, and I'll probably continue to do this one that way until um, until I get into a more confetti type area, which isn't going to happen at least on this page. Um, I believe the rest of this page. Um, like at the top here, it will continue to be the, um, excuse me, rainbow gallery color. But then as we move down the page, another slightly darker gray comes into play. And um, it'll be a lot of that one. And then this right here, which I know you can't really see yet, but this is like the point of the star. Um, point of this this first let's start over here okay so that is my stitching for the week so I think I actually accomplished a lot sometimes I feel like I'm not I'm not stitching that much or if I have a night where I just didn't really do that much stitching but then when I get to the end of the week and I show you guys I worked on a lot of projects um one thing I will say that I started doing which works really well for me for doing my videos so if you're somebody that does videos videos um i don't keep like a calendar or plan or anything like that but what i have been doing is when i stitch um i'm just putting in my my phone calendar um the project that i worked on or projects i worked on that night so it's really easy for me to go back on sunday and see everything that i worked on um so that's working really well for me as just kind of an organizational technique um, not super revolutionary but that's what it is. So today, um, I do have a little bit of haul to show you, which I'm almost like ashamed about. Um, I'm not trying to do, excuse me, a no buy, but I am trying to, um, 
be a little bit more frugal, especially because I have a vacation coming up in July and I do plan on going to Stitcher's Paradise with Stacy. We're both very excited about doing that. We're going to go to Stitcher's Paradise. I also want to say, since we are going to Stitcher's Paradise, it's going to be sometime, we haven't decided on days yet, but it's going to be sometime during the week of like the 5th to the 9th of July. If any of you guys live near there and might want to like meet up at Stitcher's Paradise, um, maybe go to lunch or something, um, let me know if you're uh, into that and you know what days might work well for you and we'll see if we can work around that. Um, it would be great to meet some of the people, uh, plus two people and um, yeah, so let me know if, if you live in Vegas and want to try and meet up at Stitcher's Paradise. Um, that would be fun. So I do need to start saving a little bit of money. So I have money to spend at, at Stitcher's Paradise. But I did get a couple things this week. Um, I realized partly because, oops, I do have more projects than I did, you know, a year ago. Um, and because I use needle minders on pretty much all my projects and I pretty much leave them on, you know, the, I put them on the project and then I leave them on until I'm done stitching on that project. Um, I was kind of running low on needle minders. I mean, I have a bunch that I made um, and they're cute, but I don't want to use multiple of the same one. And, you know, anyway, I decided I needed a little bit of a needle, needle minder haul. So I went on Etsy. I picked Kim's needle minders and I usually only get them from one store at a time because I'll put in the $35 or whatever it is to get free shipping. Her needle minders are really good prices. Um, some of them are low, as low as $3. I mean, they can go up more expensive, but I usually stick in the $3 to $5 range. So I was able to get like eight needle minders. Um, one of them I gave away because I got it for Stacy. Stacy is a huge um, uh, Gilmore Girls fan. I mean, I am too, but she's like crazy Gilmore Girls fan. In fact, her oldest son is named Logan. Um, if Logan had been a girl, his name may have been Rory. Uh, so yeah, she just loves the Gilmore Girls and I love them too. And um, so I found a Luke's, uh, Luke's sign needle minder and I got that for Stacey and gave it to her this weekend. She was like, thrilled beyond belief. So, you know, I knew that, I knew that she would love that. So actually when I went looking for needle minders, I was like, I got to see if I can find a Luke's one. So the next thing to get for her is a Starbucks cup because she's also Starbucks, Starbucks, uh, uh fanatic. So anyway, but these are the needle minders I got. Um, didn't get them with any like particular project in mind. I just picked a bunch of cat ones that I thought were cute and just, I like the really flat ones. Uh, practicality reasons so which I say that and this one isn't but I just thought the little dragon was like really really cute um, and I really like the switch and then uh, I got two cat ones this one kind of reminds me a little bit of the Laurel Birch cat collage so I might put that one on there um, and this cat just I don't know. He gave me like baggy kitten vibes. So I liked that one. Um, I got this cat cactus. Just I thought it was cute. I got um, I have a dragon scale uh, oval pink one that I got a year or so ago, and I love that one. So I got a blue heart dragon scale one. Um, another one that kind of reminds me of Baggy, it says, every stitch you make, every skein you take, every strand you break, I'll be watching you. My little stitchy buddy. He's actually really good as far as like not messing with my stuff. Um, the only thing is I have, if I have a bunch of parked threads. And I set my project down and he's by there. Sometimes he's like, oh, these look like they'd be fun to chew on. So I have caught him doing that like once or twice and stopped it right away. But as far as like really bugging my stuff, he doesn't. Um, I have it like kind of set next to me while I'm, because I, I do miss my stitching kind of half laying down, you know, with my head propped up. Um, so I have my stuff next to me and that's kind of his spot, but he'll just go down lower on the pillow and 
and he's okay. He he uh he will share the bed with my stitchy stuff when I'm stitching. And the last one, this one I actually did get for a specific project. Um, I got this for my my classic poo. Um, I have like a a, a bee needle minder on it right now that is kind of a cutesy bee that I don't really love and so I really wanted to get an actual Winnie the Pooh. So that one will go on my classic poo. So I like Kim's needle minders. I think they're cute. They have nice strong magnets on the back. Pretty big magnet. She puts like the nice size ones. Um, and I like these, like I said, practicality wise, I really like these nice flat ones. Um, because they hold the needle really well and it doesn't like wiggle around or fall off and you know and I do use my needle minders kind of as multiple purpose I do store my needles on them but I also use them to hold patterns on and sometimes to hold the fabric you know if the corners flopping around on my hoop I'll use that um, so I use them for a lot of stuff so I have one or actually sometimes two on almost every project for you know to help with all the stuff Okay, so then the last thing I have to show you as far as uh, stash acquisition, um, I have been in a mood lately to buy fabric. And um, that is a kind of like expensive mood to be in. Uh, because as we all know, hand dye fabric is not cheap. It is fairly expensive. I do have a whole bin of weight fabric to dye myself. Um, I haven't been in a dyeing mood. I tend to go kind of in waves. Um, and I just haven't felt like doing it lately. Um, although I started thinking about it, so I might have a dying moment coming up. Um, but I went on eBay, which is what I do when I'm having that desire to go spend money, but I want to like rein myself in. So what I'll often do is I'll go onto like an Etsy shop, like Hand Dye by Rolanda, or I'll go onto like Be Stitch Me, and those kind of places where the fabric is gorgeous, but it's a little bit more expensive completely justified prices. It is not, the, they're not expensive in the realm of what this stuff costs, but it costs, it's an expensive purchase. Um, so I'll go and look and get my juices flowing and then I'll go to eBay and see if I can find something that will satisfy me um, for a less lesser price. So, um, and I often, I just like doing the straight purchases on eBay, but occasionally I will get sucked into an auction and that happened this week. Um, there was one seller who had like four or five auctions actually going. Um, the other thing is, is I will never like start an auction, put in a price on an auction for something that's several days out. I only want to do an auction that day because people come in at the last second. And that's what was happening with this. I actually put bids in on like three of the auctions because I knew I was only going to, if I won, I was only going to win one of them. And I was only willing to go past a certain price on one. I mean, I wasn't going to pay the top dollar on all three because that would be ridiculous. Um, so anyway, I got four pieces, four large pieces. They're all 18 by 27. So that's a really good size. And it's a size on hand dyed fabrics that is going to be between 30 and $40 if you go to a typical dyer. Um, so I was able to get four pieces. And when I started the bidding, it was at $30 for the four pieces. And it was two or three hours before the end of the auction. Um, and as I said, it was like that for a while and then you know you get the people that are in at the last half hour 15 minutes that are like pulling up the price so i ended up paying uh 60 for four pieces of fabric of hand dyed fabric which is not cheap but you figure what that's 15 dollars for a piece of fabric that i would pay retail um 30 to 40. so it's a good deal it just wasn't you know cheap overall um they're pole stitch, pole stitches fabrics, which um, I looked them up online and they're even more expensive. They're from the UK. And I think for this size piece of fabrics, they were listed at something like 45 to 55 euros, which is higher, you know, dollars more than that. So it would probably be like 50 to $60 a piece. 
um, for this size. So I, I got a really good deal. Um, so, you know, I was happy with it. Um, I was happy I won. So I got four pieces. And um, as I said, they're, they're all Joblins. Yeah, they're all Joblin and they're all pole stitch hand dyed fabric. So I don't have the names on them. Um, and I don't, I don't know how pole stitch works. I don't know if you can get other pieces, but this is the first one, sort of pinks and oranges. And I don't have any specific, um, plans for any of these, although one of them might work for, uh, the mermaid that I want to do. Um, I still... I'm still looking for the perfect fabric for that one. This one is also kind of pinky, but it has like more blue and kind of green. It's just more colors in it. They feel really nice. The, the Joblin feels really nice. I still am not sure the difference as far as like I have to do like a side-by-side -side comparison between a piece of Joblin and a piece of Lugana because I'm not sure like physically stitching on them what the difference is and I want to kind of learn that and see if I do have a preference or if they're all the same to me. Um, this also kind of is, this one's kind of pink and lavender with some blue in it. All of these pieces I feel like would look really nice with um, sort of a Mirabilia Bella Filipina kind of kind of fabric or kind of design on it. And I have to be honest, these kinds of fabrics really make me happy just to look at them and think about them and think, you know, what would stitch nice on them. Um, so I am pretty happy with this purchase. And then this last piece, this is the one that possibly could work for the mermaid. Again, I think it's a little bit light. Um, just the other one that I just got is also a little bit light, um, but it could work. That might be something that I look at or look for at when I go to Stitcher's Paradise is the perfect piece of fabric for the Bella Filipina mermaid that I want to do. But anyway, super, super happy with this eBay purchase. Um, uh, and the, did I say they're all 28 count? Yeah, they're all 28 count Joblin. Again, they would be perfect for Mirabilia or Bella Filipina. Um, so, I'm really happy with that. Um, okay, so that's it as far as um, any stash acquisition haul this week. Uh, plans, um, nothing different. I'm uh, going to continue stitching for the next week at least on my uh, Cat Mania pieces. And then starting next month in June... Um, what did I say I was going to do for June? Purple Passions. So I have to pick whatever uh, projects fit that. I know that 100% one of the projects that will be featured in my Purple Passions is my Counted Canvas piece, uh, Violet Nosegay, which I want to get finished. So wanting to finish this is one reason that I'm picking Purple Passions. But in addition to that, um, I will be working on Lavender Roses, definitely. I don't know. Do you guys do you think that I can get a finish on that in the next month or so? Um, if I work on it consistently, yes. If I set it aside for weeks at a time, it's not going to happen. Um, so, yeah. So, next month will be, like, Purple Passions. And then... Um, Oh, and then the one thing that I did think of, because um, I told you last week I was talking about June, July, August. Um, so September is probably going to be uh, like Halloween type projects because I want to see if I can get some of those done before the season comes around. Then when we're in October and November, um, I know one of those months I want to do kind of a race to the finish. So I want to go through my whip list, see what I have that I think 
with um, four good stitching sessions that it could possibly get finished and pull those projects because I really want to get some finishes. Um, I'm not stopping with the the starts. You know, I've been doing starts not a ton, but you know, one or two a month. Um, I want to get some finishes under my belt this year. I want to be able to have that on my list. I mean, I know we're not even halfway through the year yet, but uh, but I'm worried that I'm not going to get enough stuff done. So um, that will be one of my themes, either September, October, November is going to be a race to the finish. Um, I also think sometime this summer, I want to start one of my Hanukkah projects. Um, I got uh, three, I got a couple uh, as gifts last year and I bought the Satsuma Street one, which I really love. So I want to start at least one of those. Um, it, nothing's going to be finished before Hanukkah this year. Hanukkah's also very early this year, right at Thanksgiving time. I really don't like it when it's that early. But, um, but yeah, I, I want to get one started, so <laughs> it will be a whip for a while. Um, but yeah, so those are my kind of immediate plans. Um, got to get my house in order this week. Uh, I also have maintenance coming in on Thursday. I got a notice on my door. Um, they're coming in to do another like gel, um, treatment for, uh, pests. And so I need to make sure that my house is, you know, presentable to a stranger. And um, so I've got a ways to go on that this week. And um, other than that, my office still hasn't moved, but that could happen. Seems like any time, it's just when my boss decides we're going, then we're going. So we're kind of like half packed client files are in boxes but I and I cleaned out the drawers of my desk but I refuse to clean off the top of my desk because I do not want to be working out of a box because you know work still goes on clients still call I still have to service people um and you know and do stuff for their accounts and I don't want to have to be like going through a, a box to get a pen or something so um so we're kind of we're kind of in a transitional stage let's say but um, I think that's it. I rambled at you almost an hour um, this week. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good week and a good spring. We're deep in spring, deep in May. If you do mania, I'm hoping you're having fun with that. It, whatever way you choose to do it. Um, and until I see you again, please remember to be content be kind and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye everybody.